Chapter 6, The Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Several verifiable facts help us to respond to those who are skeptical about the validity of the resurrection. One, Jesus actually did die by being crucified on a cross by Pontius Pilate. The apostles and other disciples of Jesus were convinced that he rose from the dead. St. Paul saw the risen Lord and Jesus' tomb was empty. The resurrection was an historical event. Its historicity can be verified by facts reported by both Jesus' disciples and his enemies. Number one, the empty tomb. No one ever claimed to find a body. Number two, reports of seeing Jesus after his death. Mary Magdalene, Thomas, the apostles, two disciples on the road to Emmaus, 500 people in one place, and St. Paul himself. The resurrection was also a transcendent or supernatural event. It goes beyond the realm of history and our own understanding of time and space. No one witnessed how it physically happened. Though the risen Jesus was recognizable, his glorified body transcended ordinary life. This is how the resurrection was accounted in the four Gospels. In Matthew chapter 28, women at the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene and her companion encounter an angel at the empty tomb who instructs them to tell others that Jesus has been raised. Then he appears to the women. Jesus meets the women on their way to tell the disciples and tells them that he will meet them in Galilee. Pharisees post guards at the tomb so Jesus' body won't be stolen and then bribe the guards when Jesus is raised. So basically that no one takes it and then bribes the guards to say it just happened. Jesus, se Jesus appears to the eleven before his ascension. Jesus sends the apostles out to all the nations and promises to be with them always. Here's how it happened in Mark. An angel tells Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome to tell Peter and the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee. But the women remain silent because they are afraid. The abrupt conclusion in Mark 16.8 causes some to believe that the original ending of Mark's gospel may have been lost or he died early. On the other hand, Mark may have intended this abrupt ending as a challenge for us to carry on the work of discipleship. This is how it happened in Luke. Two angels appear to Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Joanna at the empty tomb and remind them of Jesus' prophecies of his resurrection. Then, Jesus joins two disciples walking on the road and opens a scripture to them, though they only recognize him later in the breaking of the bread. This is unique to Luke only. Jesus appears in the midst of the apostles, invites them to touch his wounds, and helps them to understand how the scriptures had foretold his suffering and resurrection. Jesus blesses his disciples and is taken up to heaven, and the apostles return to the temple in Jerusalem to await the coming of the Holy Spirit. Here's how it happened in John. Mary Magdalene reports that the tomb is empty, and Peter and the beloved disciple, John, run to the tomb to see for themselves. Mary encounters Jesus in the garden, mistaking him for the gardener, and is told not to cling to Jesus because he has not yet ascended to the Father. On Easter Sunday evening, Jesus mysteriously appears through the locked doors in the room where the apostles are hiding for fear of the authorities and gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus appears to Thomas, who had not been present when he appeared to the others, and invites him to put his fingers in his wounds. Thomas responds, My Lord and my God, this story is unique to John. Jesus calls out to the apostles who are fishing on the Sea of Tiberias in Galilee, instructs them to cast their nets to the right, and they make a great catch of fish. When they arrive on the shore, Jesus offers them a breakfast of fish and bread. Three times Jesus asks Peter if he loves him, and each time Peter responds yes, a reversal of his betrayal in the courtyard. Jesus tells Peter to feed his sheep, establishing him as the pastor who will guide the church. Summary of the four gospel accounts. That the gospel writers made no attempt to mask the differences between the accounts actually argues that there were true valid experiences behind each of them. There are also several similarities. The resurrection took place on Sunday morning. There were women present. The tomb was empty. There were messengers at the tomb. And there were several appearances to the disciples in each of the four gospel accounts. Ascension and glorification of Jesus Christ. Jesus' glorification consists of his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, and Pentecost. The ascension and Pentecost are continuations of the resurrection accounts. Having ascended to the Father, Jesus continually intercedes for us with the Father and prepares a place for us with him in heaven. On Pentecost, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit upon the apostles, giving them the power and courage to preach the gospel far and wide. Our Participation in Christ's Resurrection the meaning and saving significance of Christ's resurrection. The resurrection confirms all Christ's works and teaching. The resurrection, following Christ's sacrifice on the cross, accomplishes our salvation. The resurrection gives us new life, justifies us in God's grace, and adopts us into the divine family. 
Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Christians participate in the life, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus lives on in his church, especially in the sacraments, where we participate in the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus in a tangible way. This is true especially for the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. Baptism. The Lord comes to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, forming us into his own image and initiating us into the church. The Holy Spirit, acting in the waters of baptism, cleanses you of original sin and reroutes your destiny towards heaven. Confirmation. We receive the fullness of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which strengthen us to live Christ-like lives. Just like in Noah and Exodus, water was used to banish evil and bring back good. So when you are baptized, this is exactly what happens. The holy water brushes away your original sin and indicts you into the church as God's beloved son or daughter. And so when, even though your original sin is gone and your soul is kind of at a clean slate, you still make the wrong choices from time to time. But since you're God's child, he will forgive you if you're truly, truly sorry. Penance. Jesus forgives our sins and welcomes us back into the divine family. Anointing of the sick. Jesus offers us healing in times of illness. Holy order slash matrimony. Christ helps us to live loving lives of service and to build up the people of God. Eucharist. Christ associates us with his sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to the Father, offered once and for all on the cross, and pours out the graces of salvation on the church.